Slide two season with the space bar. The space bar. Right there. Just the use the arrows. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I didn't, how did I go back to the first one? You see up arrow? The what? Up arrow. Up arrow, okay. Right. My name's David, and of course I'm taking this class with you all and trying to learn about PowerPoint. Um, my subject matter today is, it's time to dare greatly to conquer evil by doing good. Now there are four pictures up there. Each picture represents something important to think about. Liberty, justice, a chessboard, a strategy, and then of course handcuffs. <clears throat> um, this is my second uh, slide here regarding freedom of speech. She mentioned the First Amendment last week. Well, here's a clarification. This is exactly what freedom of speech entails for the First Amendment. And then I have uh, two cases down here regarding freedom of speech. Um, the basic principles, principles of free speech cases were first considered, in this case here, Schnick versus USA in 1919, which said expression may be re regulated when the expression creates a clear and present danger or injurious result. And then in 1957, Kingsley Books versus Brown, an injunction to prevent the sales of materials bound to be obscene. Any associated conduct may be subject to regulation by the state. The state is interested in maintaining public order and decency. Any activity which undermines the dignity or safety of any citizen can be prohibited to maintain public order. My second. So that's my uh, second one. Um, this is something that I wrote up that I think is relevant. I think I got it from um, uh, a book that I read in the past. Basically what this says here concerning public morality is that every, um, every moral and political uh, responsibility entails a contract. And that contract is bound, balanced with corresponding duties. So um, every legal duty is founded upon a moral obligation and some actions should be prohibited even when without evidence because the harm is incompatible with human dignity. So that's basically my theme is, if it's incompatible with human dignity, then it should not be legal. <clears throat> and um, so basically that's the third slide here. And those who undermine the common values, undermine the basis of society, which is an attack on society's values and morals, is analogous to climate treason. The government's rules provide laws which protect the right of citizens to, to pursue life with dignity, liberty with responsibility, and happiness based on the fruits of honest labor. So that was a little uh, side track there. This is my main theme of my um, power, PowerPoint presentation. The first was concerning the um, First Amendment. The second was concerning public morality. And this is what's actually happening today. Uh, how does that switch? Now I'm going back. <laughs> Okay, there have been more than 75 young ladies that have died uh, by neglect and emotional abuse. And uh, basically, if you were an investigator, you would need to have the social security number, the name of the employers, the name of the hospitals they're admitted to, a forensic specialist to identify the drugs that are ingested, and dates of employment beginning to end. And the goal with that would be to have you all think about investigating something that would be important for the community. Here's some more information regarding uh, identifying each individual that has passed away by their date of employment, their ending employment, the date of birth, how old they were, how many movies they made, and the hours they worked. Uh, <clears throat> the prosecution will begin with the name of the employers, uh, working with each movie, the hours they worked, production, production dates and movies made, and the name of the, the distributors. So basically, this is a, um, a litigation case without including answers, which need to be answered by an investigator or someone like yourselves. So who's responsible for these young ladies that have passed away in our community? Is it the parents who did not raise them correctly? Is it the pastor priest who married the couple that did not teach the parents how to discipline and raise their daughter correctly to have a job? Was it the state who gave the marriage license to the parents prior to the marriage? Was it the individual girl who just happened to be unemployed with no job and put through a lot of emotional abuse? Or was it the perpetrator who committed a, an act of uh, emotional abuse over a period of six months to five years where the, he could be held responsible? 
So a lot of people could be involved in, in um, being semi-liable for the young ladies to uh, have passed away. Now here's some information regarding internet porn statistics. Um, there's just a lot of negative things that happen when uh, pornography is involved with people and with the community, and there's just negatives, all right? So my first premise was that uh, there should be a moral contract in the community where people are accounted for. Well, all these things are negatives that are happening in our community today without any accountability, without any restrictions. So that's a puzzling thing to me. And then here's a few more. You can read some of the more. There's um, sexually transmitted diseases. There's teens watching porn. Uh, there's all kinds of physical ailments. There's just a bunch of stuff that's not being mentioned or recognized as a problem. So here's some quotes to ponder. Um, Abraham Lincoln said, nothing should ever be implied as law which leads to unjust or absurd consequences. And justice, the definition, active process of remedying and preventing what should arouse a sense of injustice. The law pronounced every, or pronounced illegal every contract offensive to Christian morals. That was the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The Hammurabi Code to cause justice to prevail in the land to destroy naughty wicked men so that the strong might not afflict the weak. And then the last one, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Martin Luther King. And my conclusion is regarding the prosecution of pornographers. Number one, the evidence suggests that the pornographers in the process of making movies abused and exploited women to the point of complete distress and emotional harm. Number two, the women were improper made improv decisions to end their lives through overdose of drugs, car accidents, and self-inflicted harm. My conclusion is I think those who caused the emotional and physical harm to these women need to be investigated and directly held accountable. So that concludes my uh, PowerPoint presentation. It's informative, and I hope uh, if you, after you hear this, I think you should all contemplate it. You can look on a, a website called Pink Cross Foundation and look at the pictures of the girls and then see what you could do and talk to people and make an impact in your community by saying, hey, you know a good lawyer or attorney? Uh, follow up and try to investigate their deaths and maybe one pornographer could be prosecuted. The whole, uh, the whole list of a thousand pornographers could be all involved in a class action lawsuit to prevent more women from dying prematurely. Have a nice day.